Welcome to a curb blog all about the stupid shit that I did as a 14 year old idiot on this little website called Newgrounds. Uh, hey, guess what? I wasn't able to get the guests that I was supposed to have for uh, uh, the curb blog I was planning on doing this weekend. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to try to get them for uh, sometime next week, either the Tuesday or uh, next weekend curb blog. I don't know. But either way, I wanted to do a quick little one uh, while I had the chance. Uh, this question came recently from Speedster X1. I have a question. What are your opinions on sprite animations like Super Mario Brothers Z and Super Smash Brothers, st- which I've never heard of? Uh, but the first one I have, and the first one I uh, have an interesting story about. But uh, I also thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about my um, uh, heavy quotation marks on humble beginnings <laughs> doing um, uh, also heavy quotation marks animations on the internet um sprites sprite artwork pixelation uh it is uh, it is it is an art form that i actually still have a lot of respect for um in terms of you know i have had the 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 opportunity of again getting to work on a lot of indie games and uh, one of them of which cryomore uh an rpg game the uh, guys in charge of it decided to go the route of uh you know a 16-bit style uh, very detailed, very beautiful looking all from the ground up uh, pixel artwork, uh, you know, method of, uh, of visualization. And uh, that shit's hard to do. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's uh, it, it's certainly not a dead art form. I, I, I'm, I'm sure some people could probably argue like, oh, you know, every indie game that wants to go pixelated, that it looks the fucking same or whatever. But uh, there's a lot of effort and time and meticulation that goes into doing it and making it look good. Uh, because, as I'm sure a lot of people probably know, there's a lot of really shitty sprite artwork out there, uh, like the stuff that I did back in the day. <laughs> um, all right, let's turn back the, 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 the clock a little bit. So um, this would have been, uh, I guess, maybe like the early 2000s, probably like 2003 or so. Um, so around the time when, uh, I mean, if the, those, those of you who don't already know, like the whole origin story of... Uh, of Tome and all that, and, and, and go rather how, uh, you know, TV Tome Adventures in particular kind of got off the ground. Uh, go listen to the Tome episode one commentary, and you'll, you know, hear the whole, hear, hear the whole story about that. I don't want to repeat too much of that, but basically, uh, around the time when, uh, my best friend, Mike Lucas had moved away and we were keeping in touch with each other over the, uh, TV Tome forums, uh, eventually that closed down and we started kind of moving around to other places, including, uh, we, we made our own forum uh, called Nintopia, which uh, didn't last for too, too long, but it was really just kind of a, a place for all the friends that we made from TV Tome to all kind of get together and everything. And um, and then also uh, around that same time, we were going to uh, the Fallout Shelter forums, which were kind of like the, <laughs> they were like the unofficial Fireball 20 XL forums, uh, which Fireball 20 XL, for those of you who don't know, it was a, it was a comic hub website for a few years. Um, and uh, the Fallout Shelter was just kind of a, message board that we went to it wasn't really like uh it wasn't really related to that site but it was just kind of labeled as such but yeah anyway um so we went to go there a lot we made a lot of friends on that website as well and um so strangely enough th- th- this was my first introduction to everybody on that forum the fallout shelter uh had some kind of avatar that more often than not unless, except for the occasional like person who could actually draw something and give themselves their own uh their own icon of it, like a drawing or something. Um, they all had sprite characters as their icons. And, uh, you know, so that was kind of our first introduction to that whole sort of world. Now, for those of you who also don't know the uh, the origin of the Kerbifer character, I'll have a link to, uh, I think, the second Kerb blog I ever did, which is uh, where did Kerbifer come from? You can hear the whole story about that. But basically, to kind of put it into chronology here... Um, before all the the sprite stuff specifically, I was this was when Mike and I were making all of the uh, characters based on our friends from the TV Tome forums, and um, you know we were drawing pictures of those like you know just normal drawings from where we were you know not doing anything digitally yet, and um, you know we we didn't really get the whole deal of like you know having uh, like a like a sprite character like a recolor basically like you know because the Fall Shelter a lot of people had like you know hedgehogs and Mega Man's and and Kirby's and things. Those are the three most common ones. And uh, Mega Man in particular, there were a lot of like edits of like, you know, either the classic uh, Mega Man 7 style Mega Man or, uh, or Zero from Mega Man Zero on uh, the GBA. It was usually one of those two. And you know, a lot of Kirby's, a lot of different uh, Sonic characters, usually uh, sprites taken from Sonic Battle for the, the GBA. Uh, it was all that for everybody. And then that was just kind of how it was. 
Now, on the point of Kerberfer specifically, uh, the very first drawing I ever did of the Kerberfer character, as in, like, the inspiration of, oh, what would my screen name look like as a character, uh, was literally just a white Kirby with a green Link hat, and it was mainly inspired by, like, the, the color palette of him from... Uh, uh, well, the the white version of him that was also in Melee, but obviously it was from the early parts of Kirby's history. You know the deal. Anyway, so there was that. But then as soon as I did that, I was like, oh, yeah, but if I were going to actually do something with this whole, like, TV Tome Adventures IP, I would I would rather have uh, Kirby for as, like, an actual original character, like something, like, like, not just a Kirby recolor, like something that I actually made. And so I had a really early... Very shitty looking version of the uh, the imp design that everybody kind of knows and loves now. Well, loves in quotations again. Lot, lots of big quotation marks in this uh, this one. Welcome to the most sarcastic curb block of all time. Um, yeah. So I uh, so and and then when we went to the forum, um, this was kind of around when the original TV Tome Adventures series, the Flash series that I did on Newgrounds for many years, uh, started. And I was gathering together a lot of other people's uh, sprite characters on those forums as uh, as background characters, which kind of led to the same uh, inspiration for what I did for, uh, you know, having the background characters that we have in Tome. So, you know, that was kind of the, the first example of me doing something like that, except there was you no know, money involved, uh, which I know I'm ripping people off. Oh, no, how dare I? Oh, God, how dare I daring make a living? Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh so, so at the time, yeah, because everybody had those kind of avatars, I thought, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll just maybe use that Kirby design because it's easy for me to just take the sprite sheet of Kirby that somebody else has ripped on, you know, like Spriter's Resource or wherever I was finding them at the time. And just, uh, you know, I was using both Flash and uh, Fireworks, which I have not used in years, um, to rip individual sprites from, from a sheet and everything and use them for different animations and all that. And, um, yeah, so I, I just recolored the, the sword Kirby into a white one and made that, and that, that was how Kerbifer was born, <laughs> uh, at least his uh, visual style, you know. And um, as far as uh, learning the, the sort of techniques of that, I guess, um, it was kind of funny because I guess I, and I still don't fully understand it. I'm sure probably some people in the comments will explain this or, or, or there's video tutorials, but I never really understood the process of actually ripping sprites, uh, like individual sprite artwork from... Uh, from a game, <laughs> I, I always kind of assumed it was something to do with like you you would you know get a ROM or like an emulation or something, and you would like do some sort of technique to clip them out of the frame and then just like place them into uh, you know Photoshop or whatever and collect them all together into a sheet and assemble each of the in, in different individual poses or whatever. Uh, I don't really know if that was how it is or whatever. I don't have a full clear understanding of that. But um, what but what I was learning about and what I was you know kind of seeing happen with as I was doing the old TTA series is editing pre-existing sprites into something that were your own. Um, well, in a way, now it, it seems so silly because again, like with, with stuff like Cry More, where I see people make their own original sprites completely from the ground up, no base, no well <laughs> base like not from Mega Man, but like a, a pre-existing character as a base. I'm on a fucking roll today. Um, <laughs> This is welcome to also the most pathetic and sarcastic curve vlog ever made. Um, yeah, but like Mike Lucas and I and a few other friends of ours who are really adept. There was a guy, uh, Akuma the Hedgehog uh, and uh, Betatronic and some other people like that who were really good at it. They were really, really good at uh, doing uh, edited sprite artwork and everything. And um, most of the time I was talking about Mega Man Zero earlier, uh, the GBA version of him. We edited those into a lot of characters the most because he had the most kind of dynamic human shape that we could do lots of different things with. And I remember I think for like Alpha and Zeto's hair, all like the spiky haired characters from the old uh, versions of, of the Tome characters. I think we used a sprite of like somebody from the Flames of Rekka fighting game on the GBA or something like that, I, I think. Uh, maybe it might have been Super Nintendo, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, we just kind of made all that stuff from there. And and so, you know, when I did the TTA series for, I want to say, maybe like two or three years by that point, um, it all kind of stemmed from that. And, uh, I you know, because we, we were working within those limitations. And it's kind of funny, too, because, like, like Tome's visual style was all based on, like, okay, how can I, you know, make telling this long you know, overarching story uh, as simple as possible in terms of the visuals so I can actually get a full-length episode done in a short amount of time. And in that same kind of light, I mean, because the TTA episodes, they were they were pretty long sometimes. They could uh, they could be, like, about the length of an actual TV show episode, depending on how um, quickly you'd read through the text and, you know, hit the button to move on and blah, 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 or whatever. Um, so I don't know. I think... Uh, 
I think in that in that sort of way, I guess, you know, like many other things, TTA was yet another stepping stone. It was another way for me to learn about uh, different things in terms of storytelling. It's kind of interesting to see the parallels all these years later, too, because, you know, Tome, again, obviously, it doesn't have like a massive following or anything. It's got a bit of a niche audience and, again, one I'm very appreciative of. But TTA, I mean, its audience was more or less the people on the Fallout Shelter forums that like followed it for a little while. And, and that was about it. Um, you know, and whoever on Newgrounds was uh, was into watching that. Um, and I, I, I also, again, not to repeat myself, on the very first Curb Log I did, I talked about um, how I kind of started learning animation and, uh, you know, the, the early experiments I had were basically all with sprite stuff and just, like, some minor, like, MS Paint pictures and stupid shit like that or whatever. So there's a lot of that. And, um, you know, fireworks, again, for ripping sprites and just, you know, like, learning how to do transparency in images. It was just, like, all these, like, new wondrous whoa kind of things for me or whatever. But the interesting parallels were that, uh, again, like, despite that niche audience, you know, whether it was then or now, it's like seeing the people who cared enough to watch through the whole, you know, 20 minute long or whatever episode that I had done, you know, even with that very limited kind of visual style. Because again, back then there, I, there was barely any, ever any voice acting aside from like little clips of us going like, ha, huh, yeah, special attack. Ah, I'm bad at voice acting because I'm 12. Uh, you know, kind of shit. <laughs> I'm talking about me, by the way. Uh, and, and Mike Lucas, but he knows it. <clears throat> seeing the immediate reaction to... Um, to what the story was and people guessing about what was going to happen with the plot. Like that was enough to draw them in. And that was like, Oh, like I like just, that, that was a feeling that really, I, I think spurred me like further into wanting to do this for a living is, is, you know, storytelling through animation specifically because, you know, watching people's response, uh, you know, to how like the, the whole thing was going was, was just really like it was it was it was motivating me like more and more and more to like keep going with it and that's why I did so many episodes for so many years and then stopped because I moved on to other things you can hear about that story also in other career blogs but anyway um other things about this uh let me think I, I guess also in terms of the other I, I guess really to answer the real question is what did I think of sprite animations um now that we're you know over halfway through the goddamn topic um I uh, I actually watched quite a few and I don't think most of them hold up, but I mean, there were definitely some interesting things about, I, I say this because from my perspective, it's like, okay, these were learning experiences for a lot of people, you know, and, or they were just people kind of fucking around and having fun. Cause those were back from the time that, you know, people were, uh, were not really doing this to make a living. Now, obviously we have stuff like Dorkly, um, who I, and I do like their Sprite movies. They're, they're pretty funny. Shady and I will quote those a lot, uh, especially the Mario is a furry one. If you guys haven't seen that before. Um, you know, and then there's like death battle and stuff like that. And it's kind of funny cause and I mean, I was on death battle. I did the, um, the, the white ranger tiger Zord versus, uh, I think it was, was it Zex Marquise's Gundam possibly? I don't remember. I'm sorry. Don't, don't kill me for my insolence. I, I'm bad with Gundam. The, the Gundam versus power ranger Megazord episode. I, I voiced on that. It's funny cause I look at that stuff and I'm just like, ha, huh. I remember when this is like all everybody ever made on new grounds for a while. <laughs> You know, and there were obviously like actual animators on Newgrounds that did stuff, and I I knew of them and got to know a lot of them, like Joey and the Zerbs brothers and the Super Flash brothers and all of them. But um, there was stuff like uh, well, the Rise of the Mushroom Kingdom and and the um, you know Mario uh, uh, Mario versus Sonic flashes a lot of that stuff, uh, which all came from uh, you know video games director's cut, which was founded by the late great uh, Randy Solom, uh, who passed away a couple of years ago, and you know. RIP to him and, uh, you know, lots of positive thoughts to him and all of his family and everything. Um, but yeah, a lot of that stuff I remember, I mean, you know, when you're a kid and you're just kind of like watching this stuff, it's like, oh, it's fun to see Mario and Sonic beat the crap out of each other. Or it's like, oh, I felt, I really felt something from, uh, you know, the, the, uh, what is it? Um, like, like the, the drama of the, the Mushroom Kingdom, Rise of the Mushroom Kingdom series or whatever, which are so like ridiculous and silly to like look back on those now. But at the time when like, we didn't have stuff like that and people were just making shit. It, you know, it was just, it was interesting. And, um, you know, some other, I, I did some voice work for some other stuff like that too. There was the Skittles and Bits series, which a lot of people took the piss out of because they were pretty dumb, uh, you know, admittedly, but I mean, I wasn't making stuff that was much better. So I'm, I'm certainly not, you know, turning my nose up at that. It was, again, it was like 2005 or whatever. Uh, oh, and of course, uh, a lot of people, uh, this, this one I, I remember was a really interesting experience. It was, uh, the Mega Man Zero, the last cataclysm. It was a two episode series meant to be three and, uh, never quite panned out. But I remember, uh, folks, um, I, I played, uh, 
um, the evil Mega Man copy X. Uh, it, it was the it was a Mega Man Zero uh, parody, or not parody. It was like a tribute. It was like more of a serious kind of thing. But yeah, the voice cast of that uh, consisted of people like Kira Buckland, uh, Edwin Tiong, Lucian Dodge was in it as, as a bunch of characters. Uh, Tam Tubui, who I worked with on uh, TTA, I, I think sometime later, he was like 700 characters in that. Uh, Nick Tyner, oh uh, Devin Mack, of course, he was in it as well. And um, yeah, it was uh, that that. Oh, and uh, uh, Mizura, uh, Rina Adachi, who went on to be uh, the Pink Parody Ranger. Yeah, I met like a few other voice actors that I went on to work with through doing that. Um, I knew some of them ahead. I, I knew Kira and Edwin ahead of time. But, um, yeah, so that was kind of fun to be involved with that one. We, I remember Mac and I sometimes go back and we look back on this. Oh, this was kind of cool to see this. And I remember we did a pretty decent job on the performances or as best as we could, you know, in 2006 or seven, whenever we did those. And, uh, yeah, the third one, I remember seeing the script for it and I think I recorded for it and it was never finished. And then uh, Flame Zero, the guy who was doing that, um, kind of uh, dropped off the face of the earth and nobody could ever find him. I think the last thing he did was some kind of like Naruto music video with a bunch of Naruto sprites or something, because that was back when that show had taken over the goddamn world. Um, and then I guess one last one to kind of get to also one that was mentioned in the question itself is, uh, yeah, Super Mario Brothers Z. So uh, Alvin Earthworm, the uh, gentleman who made those, um, which I know, again, same thing. A lot of people take the piss out of Super Mario Brothers Z because it was back in those days when it was like, oh, man, like, no originality on the internet, and oh, God, how dare that get on the front page? But, I mean, it pulled in, like, millions and millions of hits, and people still like those to this day. And they were fun. You know, they're, again, they were they were about as fan as it could get with, you know, Mario Sonic characters crossing over with Dragon Ball Z references and things. But, I mean, you know what? They were a good time, and they were fun. And I remember having – I have good memories of, like, just kind of reading through them and doing stupid voices over them with some friends of mine and stuff. Um, and, uh, and also Alan Earthworm was, uh, a really big help in, um, assisting me with, uh, flash stuff. Cause at the time, in fact, actually I'll go ahead and, and say, um, the third parody Rangers episode and the entire movie, as well as, uh, I think both of the, all, I think all the brawl taunt series even, and, oh, and then, and then Nintendo Club. Yeah, actually every, everything I did, everything I did on Newgrounds up until a certain point, uh, I did all of that stuff uh, thanks to a trick that he showed me, ba basically to, to um, word it in a way that isn't super nerdy and technical mumbo jumbo. Basically, in Flash, um, you have a timeline of like frames that you do everything on, and what we did is um, I would I would take a scene of uh, you know an episode of Tome, let's say for instance, because that was the most recent stuff where I had to apply this this technique, and I don't do it anymore because now I don't submit them to new ground, so it doesn't matter, obviously. But anyway, um, basically, we would uh, we would finish a whole scene, like put the whole animation, all the sound and everything in it, <laughs> in one uh, movie clip and place that on a, on a single frame because there were a limit of how many frames you could have in a, in a Flash movie on Newgrounds, basically, or just in general in Flash, like, technically. Uh, and also there was like audio desyncing issues and things. And he taught me a, a technique, Alvin Earthworm, where basically you have it, a scene in one frame and then you would hold, you would like program something with a little, like a special... Uh, uh, action script, which was the coding language for the coding language that I attempted to learn to make games in and before I gave up and learned how to do animation instead. Uh, it would program to keep and hold on that frame for a certain number of frames, like a certain like like a length of time that would equate to frames and uh, and play through the whole thing. And then it would switch to the next frame and go through the whole thing. So because of that, I was able to surpass the normal limit of time. And, you know, I mean, the, the Flash movies would be, you know, stupid amounts of, of massive and file size, obviously. But, you know, as I grew in popularity on the site, Tom Fulp, who was very gracious to raise the number of megabytes I could submit something on, and he was very cool to do that, thankfully. But, um, yeah, so there was a lot of that. And uh, so I, I owe Alvin a lot for allowing me to, uh, you know, get around technical limitations and experiment with doing lots of stuff at the time because of what he taught me. And uh, I remember, I think, actually, I mean, I guess a little behind-the-scenes thing, now that it doesn't matter anymore, I think there was talk of, because uh, I guess he had some kind of, those of you who followed Super Mario Brothers Z's plot at all, I think he intended on having some kind of tournament arc, you know, ha ha, ha yeah, oh, when, who's, nobody would ever do that, ha 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 ha. Uh, and I think we were actually in talks for him to have uh, some of the TTA characters appear in it somewhere. I, I'm not sure like, how far we even got into that discussion, but I remember he uh, he was a big fan of the show. He became a fan of TTA and he was really cool with that and um he, you know, he he was a cool guy, and he was he was a good friend at the time, and was really nice to me. And I remember he, I think he made some some pretty good YouTube poops at some point as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so Alvin, if you're out there, thanks very much for uh, all the help and everything. I much appreciate it. And uh, you know, 
good good fond memories of Mario Brothers E back in the day, even though I'm sure you probably don't look back on that with uh, with much happiness anymore. <laughs> Oh, uh, God, I can't imagine how many annoying people probably pester him still to this day, wherever he is on the internet, for like, make the next episode. But, I mean, I can relate, so. So, yeah, that's, uh, there's a bunch of stories for you. Hopefully that was an amusing little tie-over until I could get to the, the real stuff. But, uh, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for the question. And I guess in the comments below, uh, do you have any fond memories of Sprite Flash movies from back in the day? Do you still enjoy them, you know, whatever ones exist now to this day? Do you like Death Battle or Dork Lee and stuff like, stuff like that? Uh, have you done sprite art? Do you uh, do you enjoy it? Do you have respect for other sprite artists? You know, people who whether they're making edits or recolors or whatever, or you know, original stuff from the ground up, just like the Cryomore guys. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any fun stories to share or anything like that. Also, a big thanks to Kyle Blues, the uh, lovely and talented person who did the sprite art that I ripped uh, of Kerber for the uh, the image of this one. And uh, yeah, so if you got comments, anything, stories, fun stuff, leave those below. And if you've got ideas for future Kerblad topics, other than the one that I'm hopefully going to be doing sometime next week, leave a comment about that too, or hit me up on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, whatever you feel like. That'll do it. See you all next time. See you next time. <laughs>